And I remember them going to Bourneville and training on the hockey pitches there. So I thought, well, just, I don't know, as a, if you like, an omen or something like that, we'll do that. I remember some Tom Truce said before that as well, performance as well, but the week leading up to that was this, okay, forget all that now. You know, this is, this is a game. I think that's when the first real surprise came when, when I announced to the team that uh, Graham Fenton was going to play in midfield. So you can do what you need to be doing prepare for the game. Yeah. Who comes on the coach? Stan Boardman. <laughs> Steve Sanders tells this slightly different to me. He, Dean Sanders said, I rubbished every one of their players with, I think it was the possible exception of that. And yeah. I, I didn't. I mean, I can't describe the feeling at yeah, that final whistle. It's quite strange as well, because I think, you know, going three and up, and things only two, three minutes to go, and you still think that you could lose the game. It's going, John was nervous. A free kick that didn't quite work out the way we planned it, but it, in the end, Daly managed to shin it in. It should have been a lot more slicker than it was, but the, the end result was the same. I'm not drinking myself, but I was, I was drunk on the atmosphere as well. I mean, it's fantastic, yeah. I think I tell the idea, I think I drank from the cup there. I think I was probably drunk with the one sip of champagne I had. It didn't dawn on us till after that they would have won the treble. You know, they have been the first team ever to have won the domestic treble. You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. We've been shocking, and you know, and, and y- yes, you, your confidence was low. Um, you know, we've been going to play Man United uh, the following week in a cup game as well, and all that goes with it as well. They're going for the treble. Um, it, it was difficult to say the least, especially the games before, because our form was so poor. I remember some. Tom Truce said before that as well, performance as well, but the week leading up to that was this, okay, forget all that now, you know, this is this is a game. I think there was no pressure because of that known full well that, you know, we, we weren't expected to win that game. Well, I'll tell you what we did, because when I was a kid, at, as a young player at the Villa, they were in the final against, ironically enough, Manchester, Manchester United. And I remember them going to Bourneville and training on the hockey pitches there. So I thought, well, I'll just, I don't know, as a if you like an omen or something like we'll do that. Because don't forget the pitches, by the way, in those days. I mean, I look at pitches today, and oh, beautiful. In those days, then, of mud, and I remember Doug painting, painting the mud at, um, or he didn't, but authorised it at uh, Villa Park, and players coming off covered looking like Shrek and all sorts. But um, So we went there and trained, because Wembley was always the epitome. The surface, your sort of playing at Wembley is great. So we went there and did a, two, a couple of days on, and we used the hockey pitches, which were a fast surface, just to get the feel of playing, getting back on grass again, if you like. On the Friday, I took the boys and the wives into London, because I'd done this at Sheffield, the same thing. And we went to an Italian restaurant, a mate of mine, not a party, but they had a meal and a couple of glasses of wine and whatever. We stopped in a hotel uh, with our wives and girlfriends, a couple of glasses of wine, it was, it was, it was, it was, there was no problem with that at all. Even that build up there was completely different, you know, in terms of and being, being able to uh, be, with your, be, uh, be with your loved ones at a particular time as well. Kind of made things quite relaxed as well, you know what I mean? And you could sort things out, you, 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 know, you, you, you know, your family's been well looked after. And then I, on the Saturday morning, I moved the team out of London, out to uh, Marlow, and we trained at uh, Bisham Abbey on the Saturday morning. I think that's when the first real surprise came, when, when I announced the team that uh, Graham Fenton was going to play in midfield, mm. which I think startled uh, a few, th- raised a few eyebrows, certainly. We were surprised, because we saw a big one. We, we obviously have training sessions and yeah. team pattern of playing, he yeah. was in there as well. And we had an eye who was going to be playing. Yeah. But, and we were surprised because they had household yeah. names there. Not surprised he was playing because he's no good, because he's a we, bloody good we, player, in effect. Ray Outen, Dwight York, yeah. we never got there. I think Steve Froggart, there, well, I'm just saying just name. Any yeah, absolutely, ball. in terms of that now. And, and, and um, uh, just, just top of my head who, who were on the bench were not even in the squad at the time. Uh, young Graham Fenton to come in and to play as well as he did as well and kick on from there was fantastic. Great ability as I said but a big surprise even yeah. to us. It's about an hour run from Marlow to Wembley and I got, I got a pal of mine, Stan Boardman, to come along and join us. Come on the coach and lighten the mood if you like, which he, he did very very well. In fact, he, 
he actually got in the dressing room because Stan, was, Stan in his youth had been a useful Liverpool reserve player and he got a trick flicking it around the back of his leg and he got all the lads at it in the dressing room trying to do it. Not, not even the likes of Yorkie and that could do it. So that, that lightened the mood a little bit. It's quite funny actually because um, uh, we got on the team coach as well and we, we sat on our places. Remember it's big cup final, get your head right, you know, people with headphones on and everything else. You can do what you need to be doing, prepare for the game. Yeah. Who comes on the coach? Yeah. Stan Boardman yeah. comes on the coach. You know, yeah. Some people like to be left alone. You know, as well, so it could yes. be the other way. Some people you know, might be on his own, but looking around, everything else, if you looking around and see it, everyone has taken to it, if that makes sense. Right, you know, even the camaraderie. Yeah, I mean, I like to be nice and quiet. Yeah. So for me, it was quite, quite strange. Soon, he said nothing wrong with it. In the end, it was great. I was there one first one listening, you know, laugh, having a laugh and a joke, as it was. The time hits him most as well. He's on the coach. Yeah. It's a, it's a time you think about the game too yeah. much. That's gone. Yeah. That's taken away from you. So that you, you're actually okay. You're going out in the pitch beforehand to have a look, soak in atmosphere, and that was actually okay in yeah, terms of there's no, yeah, there's no problem with that as well. Yeah. And I think the one before is when the whistle just goes, and you got those little two minutes before yeah. to yourself. You had that bit of uh, tension, that bit of nerves, that bit of apprehension going into the game, and that's all I had that particular game. And once the kick game kicked off, it was perfectly fine and, if it, and the way the game went and everything else it was you know um, scoring particularly early as well and performing the way we did as well it, it just filled with more confidence going into the game a free kick that didn't quite work out the way we planned it but it, in the end Dalia managed to shin it in it should have been a lot more slicker than it was but the, the end result was the same then we got another one second half from a set play they got back in Buzzy had made Buzzy made three or four great saves I remember him making I mean, to Mark Bosnich at Aston Villa is without a shadow of doubt the best goalie I've ever seen. And I remember him making a save, I think it was from Brian McClare, which would have put them back in with a shout. Although we were the better side um, throughout virtually, uh, they didn't really... You always, you always worry about a team or wonder about a team with as many good players as they had. Um, the team that Fergie has always said was his most powerful side. Um, but uh, then they got back to two, and I think Sparky got the goal. I think it was. I think Mark Hughes scored for them. And then with the last kick of the match, unfortunately, and we were shouting at the referee not to send him off. Mm. Kanchelski's handled on the line. Mm. That, was, that was from Tony Daly, wasn't it? Yeah, TD, TD hit the shot. Um, Dino tucked it away, and we decided to have. All, all, everything broke loose after that. I think it was really just not to sit back at all, but have a, have a go at them at, 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 offensively, you know, because you know stronger if you sit back, they'll just, they'll just pin you down as well. They, they'll, they'll, just, they'll just wear you down eventually. So I think it was really on the more on the offensive side as well, especially I think as well you had myself, uh, Day and Dean Swans at the top and Graham Fence just sitting in that hole as well and he was that ability for him to get on the ball knowing full well that he can break the, break the lines no one knew about him no, that, exactly. was his, that was his strength yeah. he was so effective and made night at that time it took him 20-25 minutes half an hour the first half to realise that and you know, to get to grips with it and uh, by that time you know, it, it, you know we were well into, into the game full of confidence and, 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 and looking to go on and win the game yeah. Dalian was rapid Tony was rapid Dino was quick you know, and we'd said to Dino before the game, you'll play up the middle on your own. You might not get much support, but that's that's by the by. If you you keep running until you drop, and then we'll we'll change it. I don't know what we'd have changed it with, but <laughs> <laughs> Dean Sanders tells this slightly different to me. He, Dean Sanders said I rubbished every one of their players with. I think it was the possible exception of Tats, and I, yeah. I, I didn't. In goals, Les Sealy drops everything, lads. T rebounds. Paul Parker, distribution's not very good. Gives it away every time he gets it. Let him have it, he'll give it back to us. Dennis Irwin, Mr. F Mr. Average, he's all right. He's oh, all right. Not no. bad. Yeah, but he's trying to convince us, bear in mind. Not bad, he's not bad. Pallister and Bruce, pedestrian. Midfield, Ince and Keane. Let's be honest, lads, they can pass, they can run, they can tackle, they can, they can strike a ball, they can, they can do most things. But what they don't realise is, I've had a look at the pitch earlier, the grass is too long for them two today. Don't worry about that, they like dribbling with it. The grass won't suit them. <laughs> and the wide area is Kanchelskis on the right, Giggs on the left. Steve Staunton, where are you? Yeah, he said, Kanchelskis, Steve, catch pigeons, he's that quick. But he starts making it up now, you can tell. Get him inside. On the left, let's be honest, there's no way around this one. Ryan Giggs, given time and space, he can destroy anybody. 
so don't give him any. <laughs> so, so at the bottom of the page, we're all nudging each other, going, here we go. How is he going to get round this one? And up the front, Eric Cantona and Mark Hughes. And he walked away from the board. He went, and that's their team, lads. <laughs> we can beat these, can't we? What I did do, and what I vividly remember, just, just to lighten the mood as they're all going out, I always remember saying, hey, by the way, before you think about that lot, anybody know what the capital of Ecuador is? And I always remember Dino as a right character coming past me going, what are you on about? I said, by the way, it's Keto. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I remember just going flat on the floor and just thinking, thinking, wow. I mean, I can't describe the feeling at that final whistle. And it's quite strange as well, because I think, you know, going three and up and things only two, three minutes to go, and you still think that you could lose the game. It's going, Tom was nervous. Even in 3-1, two minutes to go, three minutes to go, and you still think. That was the only time I was actually thinking, and I think as well, the pressure hit you. Jeez, you know, we're going we're gonna to lose this, so we, they're going to score another goal, another one, yeah. And then you could see start to feel that uh, tension but as soon as the final whistle gone it's flat my feet and that was me done ecstasy all I remember is just celebrating with the fans the fans coming in, in as well and I remember going up to the stands as well getting the scarves and the hats from the, and the, villa, the villa fans as well and it was honestly the atmosphere was electric it was awesome I mean in all fairness it, it didn't dawn on us till after that they would have won the treble you know, I'd be the first team ever to have won the domestic treble. I'm not drinking myself, but I was, I was drunk on the atmosphere as well. I mean, it's fantastic, yeah. I think, I tell the idea, I think I drank from the cup there. I think I was probably drunk with the one sip of champagne I had. But, um, but I remember even afterwards as well, celebrating, having, having your family there as well. Um, I think we had to get back to Birmingham for 9.30, I think. So we had a 7.30 or 8 o'clock leave. I can't remember it was as well. I think I didn't get bed, bed till 6, 6.30. It was an unusual situation, really. That, that was... Is it the was it the end of February? Uh, I'm trying to think. It was early March or the end of February yeah. when we played it. So whatever happens, we're in Europe. We're not going to win the league. We're going to. I think we finished tenth in tenth, the end yeah. and ninth, tenth, something like that. But I, I said, and I told the chairman, I said, what we got now? We got a unique position where I can put players in the team now and give them an extend younger players extended run without any real pressures. All right, we might drop a league place or two or something like that. But the likes of Hugo, I told Hugo, now you'll play nearly every game till the end of the season. Um, the two German boys I put in, Bright Cruz and Beinlich, give them a look at it. Yorkie played a lot of games after that. In the end, people, particularly Hugo, he benefited the most mm -hmm. because the following season he virtually became a regular and was for a few years later. You know, we could almost go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. They were a better side than us, or had better players, but if they, if they weren't on their top and we were, we would win. When we were in front in the game, we, they hadn't caused us anything like... As I say, there are a couple of situations that Buzzy made. He made one worldie, I think it was, off McClare. Mm. But they hadn't, really, they hadn't really threatened us that much. So it wasn't as if we were constantly at a sort of, oh, here they come again, here they come again. Final word for yourself, yeah. straight into the camera for yeah. the camera. What's your message to the players? Yeah, I say to the players, uh, go out, uh, enjoy the day, and if you produce anything that I know you can do, you know, then uh, we'll come back uh, with winners' medals. I hope we wish you all the best and, and success with that. Go out and go out with a view to win. Go to Wembley to win. I know people say, you know, it's a day out. It's not a day out, it's a day of glory if you win. If you don't win and you give your best, you can't do anything more. They have a chance. It's a fighting chance, and that's, that's got to be the operative word. But you, at Wembley, you never know. There's been upsets. I do hope that they make it very, very attritional. That's going to be, to me, their best way of, uh, of getting the results. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your thoughts and comments. We'll be back soon with another episode. Until then, up the villa. <laughs>